is it going to get worse before it gets better? Are we now in a full-blown crisis? We're not in a full-blown full -blown crisis. I think in some, to some degree the markets have got a little bit ahead of themselves in, in anticipating that the extraordinary fiscal uh, and monetary easing measures that central banks have conducted will be enough to get us through this. I think the second order effects in terms of the, the impact on the economy, the, the reduction in, in, in GDP that will come through in the second and third quarters, is likely to have a more uh, significant hit to markets once that has been fully taken into account. But, of course, that depends on whether the measures that have been taken by central banks and regulatory authorities are effective in, in calming uh, the market's perception as to what happens next. But I think the, the real risk is when we see what the economic damage has been and how quickly the economies can come out of, uh, out of that. I mean, we are assuming that, that, that things pick up in the second half, but the timing of that within the second half and the scale of the recovery is, is anybody's guess at this point in time. Uh, do you worry this, you know, becoming a financial crisis? I know we've had a couple of warnings from the ECB, even a Bundesbank in Germany. And is there, you know, could there be another liquidity problem in the markets? Well, I think the, the central banks have done a fantastic job in, in terms of making liquidity available, which, meant, which has meant that markets have functioned. Um, but the longer the, 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 longer the uh, crisis goes on in terms of economic activity being severely constrained and people being unable to go about their business in the normal way, then that liquidity crisis soon becomes a, a solvency crisis for businesses that are unable to, to restart or, and for individuals that are uh, unable to see their incomes recover. So it, it's, a, it's a timing thing. If we can get back to, to work and, and build uh, to whatever the new normal will be relatively steadily over the next, uh, the next couple of quarters, then we should be able to avoid a, a, an economic crisis. But again, it's really dependent on whether um, the, the steps that have been taken to put liquidity into market, which have been successful, and the steps that governments are taking to ease uh, lockdown over time are progressively successful, the worst thing that could happen would be a period of uh, easing of restrictions and then a second wave which requires uh, a lockdown or, or similar measures to be taken again. I think that would have a significant impact on confidence, which would have a knock-on effect to economic activity. Where do you see investment opportunities? I don't know if it's regionally or it's you know, by sectors. I, I think that there will be opportunities coming out of this. At the moment, um, we're seeing a lot of flows into liquidity funds, into money market funds, as people are, if you like, pausing in terms of making uh, more, uh, more long-term uh, decisions. On the other hand, Asia is coming out of the crisis ahead of, of the rest of the world, largely because it went into the crisis earlier, and some of the countries in Asia have been extraordinarily successful in mitigating and dampening the, the, the human cost of the virus. So it, Asia looks as if it is a, 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 an investment flow opportunity ahead of many other parts of the world. And yes, clearly there are going to be uh, uh, companies and sectors that will, will benefit from flow over the next uh, several quarters and years. Healthcare. Um, I, I still think there's going to be a huge amount of investment into the climate change agenda. Um, I think infrastructure and, and the activities around that will benefit, uh, given the uh, the need to get the economies going again and people back to work. Uh, 